Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well we're going to take a look at Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma, what is it? Um, obviously we've got Lean, we've got Six Sigma and then a number of organizations have decided to put together what is Lean Six Sigma. Now I have to be honest this will be this will be slightly different depending on who you speak to. What I'll tell you is this if you go to a Lean consultancy it will be mostly Lean with a bit of Six Sigma. If you go to a Six Sigma consultancy it will be mostly Six Sigma with a little bit of lean. So I suppose this is just one version of what lean Six Sigma could be. Now in order to understand this, we have to understand, we have to understand what lean does and what Six Sigma does. So let's do that first and then we'll take a look uh, and we'll see how the two fit together. So let's start by talking about, well, okay, Let's put lean here. Let's put six sigma over here. Okay, so what is lean? What is six sigma? Okay. Now to some degree, at the top of these two techniques is the same, the same aim. They are just coming at it in a slightly different way. And that is they want to please the customer. So the centerpiece of both of these is the customer. So in one way they are they are linked together. Now lean, first of all, lean, what are you trying to do? You are trying to understand what the customer values. And then what you are going to do is you are going to make that value flow as fast as you can towards the customer. So what are you really interested in? Once you understand what the customer values, everything else is about time. How fast can you turn a customer's request for an order into finished goods leaving your factory? And that is what really what lean is about. It's about understanding value, then making it flow as fast as possible towards the customer. Okay, so what's going on over here? Well, Six Sigma, slightly different. They talk about the cost of poor quality. So this really goes after money, all right? Now, why does the Six Sigma go after the cost of poor quality? Why does it go after money? Well, it's very simple. Motorola created the phrase Six Sigma, and Six Sigma is really a target. They created this target to aim for. Why was it all about the cost of poor quality? Because their whole problem, the problem for Motorola back in the early 1980s was a quality problem. They were losing market share because the customer thought their quality stinks. So it was all about pleasing the customer, but in what way were they displeasing the customer? Poor quality. It was everything to do with poor quality. So they are gonna chase the cost of poor quality. And because they are chasing the cost of poor quality, what is this typically all about? Well, it's about fixing production problems in lots of ways. It is technical 
problem solving. Although this could also be at the design level because maybe you're designing technical problems into your products, but typically it's down at the manufacturing level. It's technical problem solving. It's typically about quality. Of course, it's very easy to calculate the cost of poor quality when you're making, when you're making defects. It's about quality. It's about error, removing error. It's about defects, removing defects. And that is what Six Sigma is brilliant at. It is world-class technical problem solving. It is based on physics, it is based on maths, and therefore it works. Yeah, it's world-class technical problem solving. Now I have to be honest, over here with Lean, Lean is a bit more all-encompassing than that because when you are trying to make value flow, you are gonna transform the way that the product flows through your factory, the way information flows through the offices. This is a much more uh, all-encompassing business activity, much more so than what Six Sigma was about, because Six Sigma was about getting quality to be absolutely brilliant. So, how do you make, how do you make val value flow? Well, typically, you concentrate on three things. You concentrate on unevenness. Of course, in Six Sigma, that's variability. So again, there's a similarity. There's a similarity here. You concentrate on something called overburden. A little bit of this is error. So overburden is often doing activities that shouldn't be there. Extra inspections, rework, that type of thing. Extra activities where, Extra an, operator activities where an operator has to do a little repair operation before they can fit the parts together because they don't quite fit, they haven't quite been made correct. And you've got this overburden, work that shouldn't be there. And finally, waste activities that the customer doesn't value and of course this is what lean is famous for but to be honest these two are probably more important uh, than the seven wastes and the seven wastes they've been named they are transport inventory although that's inventory you don't need. You, you always need inventory in a system to, to a lesser or greater extent. Motion, waiting, overproduction, overprocessing, Finally, defects. So let's have a look where, where Lean and Six Sigma are kind of coming together. Well, they're coming together there. Defects. They're coming together here because that's really variability. And Lean is saying, get rid of variability. And of course, they are both interested in the customer, although one comes at it from a money point of view, one comes at it from making the customer's order arrive as fast as possible with the minimum amount of uh, activity that the customer doesn't value. This is about time, this is about money. So that's what they are individually. So now, how are you gonna get Lean Six Sigma? Well, for me, I like this way of setting up the, the aim of what you're trying to do. The aim of what you're trying to do, making the, the customer's order full of value, flow towards them as fast as you can possibly make it. And so for me, Lean Six Sigma would look like this. This would be my aim, overarching for your continuous improvement, for your business strategy. We are gonna chase these things away the lean way. We are not gonna do it monetarily 
because if you chase money here, a lot of this you will not do and you will not please the customer. You'll stop yourselves from doing it if you chase the cost of poor quality. So we are going to chase time, we're going to chase lean. We will use the lean tools where possible, so Paul, 5S, TPM, uh, etc. Good workplace organisation, high junker boards so that you can take the unevenness out of your planning so you flatten the planning system. But of course when we get technical problems, when we get defects or when we get technical design problems, we will pull Six Sigma out of the box and we will use Six Sigma under this attack, under this approach. If you try and mix these two approaches, money versus time, you'll get completely mixed up. So you have to make a decision, and I like to go and, and track time. Um, I mean, the true cost of poor quality, you can never work out anyway, to be honest. The true cost of poor quality is upsetting your customers so much, you don't have any customers left, and you go out of business. We don't need to calculate that. So, why don't we go the other way? This is a more positive thing. We're heading towards pleasing the customer here. Whereas what we're trying to do here is run away from upsetting the customer. I prefer to head towards pleasing the customer. There is an unlimited amount of pleasing the customer that's possible. So if you want to know what's Lean Six Sigma, it's that as an overarching aim. With the toolkit, the technical problem solving toolkit bolted in there, and then you've got Lean Six Sigma. And for me, that is the best way to do it. They work really well together because down here at the defect level, Lean really isn't very powerful here. It doesn't have technical problem solving toolkit. It doesn't have maths and physics bolted into it. But Six Sigma has it in spades. So the weakness of Lean is, is matched by the strength of Six Sigma. So they work really well together and that for me is the proper way to do Lean Six Sigma. Lean leads, Six Sigma helps. And if you do it that way, you will make pots and pots of money.